Corn Warriors is presented by Pivot Bio. Chad Henderson he is known as the Bull. We got Brooks Carton. Now, Brooks is a griffin. Now, if you guys don't know what a griffin is, uh, that is half lion and half eagle, and it may have claws. I don't. <laughs> Now we got Jake Droads out of Michigan. Jake is the dude. Out of Ohio. We have got Corey Atley, the beast. Up by Oregon, Illinois, we have Dan Lepkis, known as the Hammer. All right, now ladies and gentlemen, we got a big chair here in the center, and uh, we'd like to introduce to you the 2022 King of Corn, Kevin Kolb. And last but not least, once your corn knee high by July, better get the plant, boys. I make my living off the land. We're definitely gonna get rowdy this year. With aching back in Cali's pain. I'd like to say that this season's gonna be better. Old man said you read what you sow. If you're gonna do something, be the best you can be at it. It's hard out here. I'm always bringing the heat. We in Alabama. I'm an early riser, no nighter. Call me clown boy, yeah. We're coming back a little harder this year. Chad, we're going to start with you. You had, this is your first season on Corn Warriors. Can you talk a little bit about it? How did it go? What is some of the stuff that you had to go through on your first season? It was a good time, you know, a good experience. I said two or three times during the year, you know, if anybody ever gets the opportunity to do this, they should definitely do it, you know, to be around a group of guys and friendship. You know, because sometimes the, the when the camera crew shows up, things might not run as smoothly, and it's it's reality. It happens. But uh, one of the first days we were planting, we quite, had quite a deal with the planter, you yeah. know, and it's just the way it goes. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it just it, it always happened. You know, I mean, we was running good. The second time you showed up planting, had a deal with the planter. We showed up at harvest. Combines are running, and bam, one goes down. You know, immediately. You know, and. Well, and it's interesting too, uh, it was my first year on the show and getting to travel around it, and I gotta tell you, one of the first things when I got onto uh, Chad's ground was just the color of the soil. It's definitely a different different color, you know, when think, people talk about how red it is, it's, 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 a, it's red. It ain't, it ain't, you know, Garden of Eden like, you know, these boys have got, you know. Brooks, we're going to move on to you. So uh, you had a pretty good spring. Uh, would you talk a little bit about your spring? You know, we did. We had, I felt like, one of the best starts we've ever had. I mean, things actually ran pretty smooth. We were getting timely rains. You know, the fourth quarter is where, you know, we had our struggles with, you know, the precipitation and the heat. And, you know, as you all know, we're mainly irrigated or 50% irrigated and you know the, the ground I work with on for the shows my irrigated ground but we can't do it without help from Mother Nature. We didn't get our kernels as big and heavy as we normally do. That was our struggle was the end. One thing I noticed uh, when we were out there in season with you this year we did run a, uh, you guys run a lot of pivots. We're fortunate to have a good aquifer and be able to use pivots yeah, I mean, there's always something to work on with a pivot, but um, it works good. We do a lot of fertigating with the pivots. It seems like that's where we gain most of our yield, and that takes a lot of management and a lot of time. You know, it's allowed us to be diversify our farm with produce, 
you know, with the water as well, with the sand, but it's been good. Now, Jake, we're gonna move along to you. Northern Michigan. This year, how did your spring start off, Jake? I mean, the start was pretty good, I guess, but then middle of May it turned so dry you couldn't hardly get the planter in the ground. The wind came to get it, it got us again. I think it probably took, I don't know, wasn't as much this time because the corn was basically made, but probably five to 10 bushel. What I couldn't believe what you had been doing, you had some healthy corn there. It was still trying to stay alive even as it was, yeah, it was fighting to stay alive and that was kind of interesting to see. Yeah. I mean, it was all good corn. I mean, I was sending pictures to Kevin trying to scare him, but it didn't work, but. <laughs> Farmers deserve a nitrogen that works as hard as they do. One that stays with the crop until the job is done. It's time to turn to a better nitrogen with Pivot Bio. I'm very fortunate that I've been working with Concept Agritech now for four years. We have 12 Concept Agritech plots out right now. We feel like we're picking up some pretty good bushels. Oh, here's one of their flagship products here. This is their cow bore product. It's their calcium boron premix. They do have a great line of products here. Man, this is like drinking water. I think every crop needs a gallon or two of it. It's just, it does that much for you. All right, Corey, Ohio. Talk a little bit about your year. Uh, start with your spring. You had a pretty stinking good spring this year. Yeah, we had a, we had a really good spring this year. Uh, for the first time ever, we was uh, planting corn in April, which turned out to be the kiss of death. We were supposed to only have like two to three days of cold weather. Turned into two weeks. We was uh, really cold and wet. That corn just sat in that ground. It actually uh, spiked through, and as soon as it spiked through, we went a whole week and only recorded uh, five, five G GDUs, so. That hurt some of our better ground early, but uh, then Mother Nature paid, paid us right back, and we was able to, you know, power right on through that and get going, but we definitely lost some in that early spots, but, you know, we've been playing at the end of, end of May beginning of June for the last two or three years. So just to be able to be in the fields in April, uh, we was tickled to death. I mean, and it was dry. I mean, you know, a lot of times we will sit up here and preach do's and don'ts of what we shouldn't do. And then you see on camera, well, it looks like they're mudding in. Well, cause we are, <laughs> you know, it's time to go. So it was nice not to be able to do that this year. We had Matt Miles and Robo came up to visit you. Talk a little bit about that. Was that the first time you uh, had Matt on your farm? Yeah, it was. I mean, I, I think him and Rob was sneaking up trying to get some insight for beans, you know, truth be told. It went very, very well. So I think, if I remember right, I think Matt, they were already planting or close to being done with planting. And when they came up to Ohio, it was really cold. We was, we was cold and, and wet, but we was actually getting ready to just start planting beans a couple days after they were there. Just being able to, you know, communicate and talk with them and get different I I ideas from them. And uh, the conversations that we had were just, were, were priceless. I mean, and that's the thing that, you know, I, I hope people understand from everybody up here. You know, Chad's been over there, Dan's been over there. The, the different ideas that we able to communicate and bounce off each other, it, it really helps everybody. Well, it's interesting too, we talk a lot of nuts and bolts. I mean, I remember you guys out by the plant or we were going through and talking about singulation on soybeans and stuff like that and what we thought was important. But in the next time we're talking about mental health, you know, that's, that's interesting to touch on that base on a farm show. A lot of people don't like talking about it. Uh, you know, it, it takes a, a lot of pride, you know, to not be able to talk about it. And, you know, for somebody like Matt and Rob to be able to come up and we have a full-blown a full blown con con conversation about it, you know, the part that you guys seen on film was only about two minutes of a 30-minute conversation that was had. 
you know, and, and Matt was very raw and open, and I felt like I was very raw and open about it too. And, uh, you know, I, I just hope more, more farmers can find that somebody that they can trust in and be able to open up about the problems that they are having. It's been a great year, but yes, a lot of fun. It, it, yeah, it was a, a lot of good things happened this year. Uh, it was kind of spoiled this year, you know. Mother Nature did take care of us. We didn't have as many obstacles to o overcome like the past. So, you know, this year was, was fun. Copperhead concaves, to me, are the only way to go. This is a real return on our investment. And when we went to these, we took an automatic increase all the way to 5,300 bushels an hour, which is incredible. Sometimes we don't have enough truck to keep up with what this combine can harvest. Use less horsepower, less fuel, and did a better job cleaning. It's second to none. We're out today looking at a pivot biofield. We're looking at being able to cut back your synthetic nitrogen and being able to replace that in furrow with a micro. This has a pivot bile. Do you know what it says in the directions? Shake your box. It's a pivot bio proven. I don't have much to complain about. Where the starter washed out, the pivot bio corn was still green at the end of the year. 25 pounds you can count on that yeah. the pivot bio will produce throughout the season. Corn Warriors is presented by Pivot Bio. And now we got Dan Lipkiss. Dan from Oregon, Illinois. You guys uh, had quite a year this year. Our year started spring probably the same way, just awesome. You know, we, was, we, were able to, we were able to run early and dry in perfect conditions, which the last two, three years were wet, same way you couldn't get in the field. So uh, really happy to be able to get going perfect conditions. You know, it's like, man, this, this is going to be awesome. A hat, we had to plant at two and a half, where we like to be at two. There was no moisture left at, at two. Pretty much everyone in our area had to do that. We did get enough heat. Uh, we got everything out good. Uh, stands looked good. Uh, weather was still good, still dry while we were fighting it. Uh, but you know, when the corn's small, it can, it can take it pretty well. We got up to around V5, you know, a very critical stage, and it was uh, May 28th and 30th, a, a good frost. Didn't kill ours, but it dinged the living crap out of it. Pretty much, you know, every plant was affected. Some of them welded way down, some of them not so much, depending on whether it was no-till or not and where it was in the field. But we went from a crop that was per perfectly even, like we always preach about, right, to a crop that basically you would have thought came up very unevenly because it restaged it at that point. So we had to deal with that. We got a few showers. We thought, well, you know, maybe, maybe things are going to start turning around. Uh, but it stayed dry. Uh, we, I mean, on record, I think it was the fourth driest summer on records, around five inches for the entire season. For us, that was the worst, basically, drought, I would say, that we've had. Our dry land really suffered. Uh, I, we, I think we did better than a lot of people in our area because of some biology and some other things we're doing. Irrigated ground, we were able to hold the moisture, or, you know, keep water to it. Not as much uh, the way my irrigation is set up. It's, I'm gonna call it a little bit more supplemental than total precipitation. We can't get enough gallons out. So we were able to save it, uh, but not be able maybe do as good as we wanted. So it was a little rough. I think Chad came up and seen us in the middle of summer and he's driving up and he's going, ah, bull it ain't that bad get about five miles away and he's like, oh. Yeah, I, we'd left a, a hefty deal and I drove on about, what was an hour and a half or something? Yeah, 
and, I, and I'm driving and I'm like, man, this is not drought. You know me, I, I mean, we know drought. And I'm like, this is not drought. And I drove on up and I drove on up. And when I got probably, I would say like Dan said, it was probably eight to 10 miles from his house. It was bad. One question I got too, and you run uh, center pivot plus you have drip. So when you get in that dry situation to keep up, I mean, uh, center pivot's probably your best bet? Either we'll keep up our center pivot, we can keep more water to it than the drip just because of the amount of water that I have available at the drip system. This year I could see that it was getting dry and actually Matt helped me a little bit on this, uh, Matt Miles. I, I called them and asked about trying to you know, I need to transfer some water from a tile uh, drainage ditch. What we did was we took some tile water that was a thousand feet away and we pumped it to our retention pond that the creek is feeding. So out of my tile water, I was able to supplement another couple hundred gallon per minute to get me back to that 350, 400. So at least I was able to salvage that crop. If I wouldn't have been if I wouldn't have pumped that water across, it would have been uh, a lot worse. Kevin, we're on to you now. So, what what was what was the yield again? Uh, four hundred nine. Talk a little bit about that. Your personal goal, what you had there with hitting four four hundred nine. You know, I, I said this in uh, two thousand thirteen. We grew. 374 bushel. We had perfect weather that year. I think we only had one or two days that was nighttime temperature that was above 70 degrees. But just to tell you how hard it is to gain, uh, you know, I, I like to think we've we've understand growing corn a lot better than what we did back then. But you know, it was 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. It took me eight years to gain. 25 bushel. It's hard to do, you know, and we learn from year to year, but uh, we, we went with a different hybrid this year. So we planted again May 13th, 15th when we started again. And, um, you know, I kind of, you know, I don't know if it's coincidence or, or not, but the last five years have been our highest yields. And we've been planting from May 10th to 25th have been our, our first plant of corn. Well, you and I talked on the phone, and I think it was around May 14th or 15th, somewhere in there, and you were calm as could be. I'm like, hey, so you thinking of fly? How's it looking there? You know, we knew it was wet, and you were waiting for the right time, and it, it pays, obviously. Yeah. Well, I mean, we don't farm as many acres as some of these guys do, so, you know, we don't have to push it quite as hard as what they do. But uh, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable, and, you know, now we get into June 5th on up, you know, we might start getting a little concerned. Well, another thing on that field, too, that was interesting, uh, the field that you pulled 409 off of. Uh, talk, if you wouldn't mind telling everybody a little bit what had happened to that field just before and kind of the condition of the field when we harvested it. So we had a rogue storm. We had an eight and a half inch rain in an hour. And, you know, if, if you've been to Dubois or in our area, we're kind of hilly and, you know, about basically washed our little town out. and. That creek bottom that we got there, you know, normally can handle pretty big rains, but we had some uh, headwater go through it and it kind of pushed some of it, made some of the stalks weak and we were driving by and we could just see there was a few spots of corn, which was, the corn was about black layered. I think it was black layered when that storm hit. Um, so it did knock some of the corn down there. So um, not saying we could have had much better corn, but we did not quite get all of it. Here at Advanced Yield, we're not only just a consulting company, we are now offering a full lineup of select crop inputs. No middleman, for the farmer, by a farmer. Unleash your crop's potential. Visit online or give me a call today. What are some of the things you guys are looking at for this season? Is there something you're focused on in 2022? How to farm more corn with less nitrogen. I think we're all un understanding the, the input price that's going on now, and I think it's here to stay. 
So you can't skimp, you know, you can't cut back. It's, it's just back to the drawing board to sharpen the pencil. And at the end of the day, you know, we, we don't want to start, you know, cutting back and cutting back because eventually it'll catch up with you. You know, I think that's an important key to be efficient and um, save on some other inputs. And um, that's kind of the main thing we're looking at. And then other things we're looking at in 2022 is trying to understand plant stress. Uh, we want to understand stress a little better, try to get in front of it. You know, everything we do with a race car, to understand when something happens or what happens, when it's going to happen, and get in front of that curve is, is the key to this. You know, with our dry years that we had before and we have the same forecast coming in now, we are still in a drought. You know, I like to give, give my crop fertility, and that comes at a cost. If you've got no rain, you're not gonna get a big yield. So, spend the money, I guess is what I'm saying. That's gonna be a tougher call for me than normal. You know, every year you learn. Uh, we had Sean's plot where, you know, she did a 391, and comparing my inputs to what her inputs were, you know, she spanked me pretty, pretty hard there on ROI, so. The interesting thing was uh, we're finding that maybe we're, we, we're still over fertilizing because hers, we only made one trip of Y drops. And what, what we're finding out, you know, the years of the manure and the, the, the humic acids that we use and the sugars that, you know, our biology is, is ramped up pretty good that uh, we could cut back even more. And then I think Corey at the nail on the head, once they come up, it's really hard for, for the whole industry, you know, from the seed corn to the fertilizer and, and you know, they like making money too. <laughs> so it, it's gonna be hard. So we're, we as farmers have become a lot more efficient. You know, we got no Brooks and Chad and, you know, Corey last couple of years and Dan and Jake, you know, and this goes for the, you know, the other show pod fathers. It's, it's gonna be pretty hard to find 10 farmers that's, that's better together than, uh, than what you got between us and the pod fathers. So, we as a group are, are pretty tough to beat. Again, from all of us here at Corn Warriors, uh, we appreciate everybody in this room. Guys, thank you so much for all that you've done this season. We appreciate it, and uh, Kevin, congratulations. Thank you. 409. Thank you. 409. Yeah. 409. Plant 22, here we are. We back again? Who would have thunk it? We gotta roll. And away we go. We're gonna talk a lot about soil, nutrition, plant health. Well, it's always a tough group of farmers. We've got some new faces on. I'm Heath Cutrell. We're the auctioners we farm in South Central Nebraska. Man, they were just the nicest people and smart. It's not about who can do it the fastest, it's who can do it the best. Man, we're giving away a lot of information. That's yeah. why you're watching Coal Warriors. I gotta get to work. We're always hoping for better.